Hearts Express presents Don Keel's keynote speech at the 2010 Midwest Audio Fest Speaker Design Competition. Just before, well, actually, let me go back. I've I worked for Electro Voice twice. I worked for Harmon International twice. I've worked for Klipsch. I've worked for Crown. I've moved around a lot. And uh, when I was at JBL the first time, I worked on the large biradial horns. 2360, it's used in the, some theater systems, it still is. And uh, I was a member, I don't think I was at the time, but uh, there was a series of one and two technical papers which appeared in the Journal of the Acoustical Society that represented some uh, research work that had been done on underwater transducers by the Naval Research Labs. And it was all um, you know, it was in the public domain. They didn't have any rights over it. I mean, it was government-sponsored work that was just let out. And what they described is a spherical transducer in the shape of a spherical cap. You have a sphere, you have a sphere, you cut off a section of it, and that's a spherical cap. And they pointed out that with the mathematical analysis, you could using Legendre functions and all of these esoteric mathematics that if they put a shading on this spherical cap, it's usually a piezo, a continuous shape surface, and the Legendre function specifies that it, the level in the center of this sphere is up to maximum and then it tapers off according to the Legendre function. Now there may be some of you that you know, know FFTs and the hand weighting and all this stuff, it's somewhat analogous to that, but for circular, based on circular harmonics and the like. But it's very simple. They pointed out in the paper, and I, I'm not getting actually into my paper now, so, uh, but I wanted to give you a little hint of what I was going to talk about without you going into the PowerPoint. Feel free to interrupt me at any time. Uh, I have a goodie CD which I have prepared. This talk I gave at the Boston sections a joint meeting last uh, January if I'm not mistaken. I gave a joint meeting to the Audio Engineering Society, the Acoustical Society of America and the Boston Audio Society and I gave this same talk and I've stripped I've stripped out some of the slides. It's still a big long talk that I actually gave in two hours and 15 minutes originally. I'm going to be giving it here in about a half an hour or so. But I have a prepared a, a goodie disc of CD information, including my talk in Boston, a two, two hour and 15 minute uh, quick time movie file, and all of my associated uh, PowerPoint presentations. And, uh, and I would like to, I've got, Parts Express was good enough to copy 25 of these, so I've got some of these CDs. <laughs> and uh, I, my son is the webmaster of my website, dbkeel.com, and I have, we've just updated the website with a new CBT page, and we've just been working like day and night for the last four days to get it going by the time of this meeting. And the version that's on the disk now is version 1.0, and the one I have on my website is version 2.0, and it has significantly more information on it. So uh, some of you may not get this because we don't probably don't have enough CDs. But uh, what's the name of the gal on the back? Your, I'm sorry. What is your name? Amy. Amy, come on up here, <laughs> please. We, I think some of these we've handed out. We've got about 20. Yes, the CDs. And, and two, and I'll get, get those out over there too, the ones in the... All three. I'm going to hand out all three. Uh, yes, the, I have a readme, I'm sorry, I have a readme file that describes the contents of the disk. This happens, it actually happens to be on the disk, but uh, there is a version one, and I'm going to have... Amy, <laughs> hand out both the version 1 and the version 2 and you can, because the version 1 goes along with the CD that's here, 
The version two, which is a longer list, goes along with the CD, which is on my website, which you can download. Okay. So there, so I suggest you can have the CD now, and then, uh, but I suggest downloading the the version two as soon as you can. Okay. In any case, got to get going here. There's a whole lot of stuff on there. I'm not going to go into any detail, but there's a, a lot of information, including PowerPoints of the four uh, posters, which I have over here on the wall. And uh, you can read it yourself. And uh, a number of other supporting information, sound field analysis and the like. These are the uh, there are copies of my posters in PDF files. And uh, now I'm actually starting the talk now. Um, the intent of these arrays is that it's a, a, a device which is broadband constant directivity. It has a pattern which is invariant with frequency. I mean, it doesn't change. And furthermore, it doesn't change with distance. I mean, a, a regular straight line array, if you measure a polar on it, it changes as a function of the measurement distance. But these don't change when it's implemented properly. And so what I've started out here is I'm, I'm going through a a number of systems. I'm going to ask you whether they're con broadband constant directivity or not. The first one is, does anybody remember this one? The infinity IRS beta? What is that? Is that, is that, that broadband constant directivity? Anybody? No. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because it's, it's a straight line array and its polar pattern gets narrower and narrower as you go down. I'm sorry, as you go up in frequency. I need a little pill mic for my PA here so I can <laughs> talk with my hands. And here's another little system. Is that broadband constant directivity? Nope. Because its polar pattern changes with frequency. Here's another one. That's a horn. I think that's a 2380 horn. No, no, I negative because that's a Yamaha system, but it's a uh, copy of one of the horns I worked on at JBL. Is it? Sort of, in the horns range only. Here's a a commercial, you know, an array that you'd set up in an arena or auditorium. And it's, it, 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 it could be, depending upon how it's set up. Uh, here's something I picked up off the internet. I mean, it's just, it's just a conglomeration of things that... <laughs> horns and horn-loaded bass boxes. And it definitely isn't. Yeah. Well, now here's one. A point source. Is it broadband constant directivity? Anybody? Yes. Absolutely. Because it's, it has the same polar pattern. It happens to be omnidirectional. So that's a big yep on that one. Here is Jim Long, who is still with actually ElectroVoice, which is a division of Bosch Communications. These are the white horns that I designed at ElectroVoice, the, the HR 9040, which are made out of white fiberglass. And he has these set up in his room. I mean, in his living room. You know, he's driving them with like a one watt output transformerless tube amplifier, you know, because they're extremely efficient. And that's me on the left there, of course. And that's a qualified yes if the horn is big enough. So here's, on the right, are the JBL biradial horns that I work with at JBL, and I have the patent on those. On the left is the JB, I'm sorry, the Altic Lansing Manta Ray horns. These are big horns, I mean, commercial. And those are also, and those are, again, if it's as a qualified yes, because if the horn is big enough. Here are some systems which were actually DIY systems that I did and Marshall and Monty K worked on. And Marshall is right over here, and Monty K is in the upper <laughs> picture on the right, and Marshall K is on the lower. And Monty K built himself a, you know, sophisticated curved arc CBT array for use as a center channel. And here, these are pictures of them sitting by it. In this case, this is an absolute yes, because of the CBT arrays, which I'm going to describe. Click the link in the description for the next part of Don's presentation.